Okay, so we want to discuss now uh, two more notions which relate to vectors, to vector spaces, and to, as we're going to see, to subspaces. So the notions are what is a linear combination and what is a span. So let's start with the first one. So here's the definition. Definition. Um, v, when I write V, it's probably going to be a vector. V, which is alpha 1 times V1 plus alpha 2 times V2 plus dot, dot, dot. Alpha, what did I use here? K times VK, where alpha 1, alpha 2, all the way up to alpha K are just scalars. They're elements of the field. is called a linear combination of v1, v2, all the way to vk. So we start with a bunch of vectors, k of them, v1 up to vk, and we write anything that we can write as a sum of scalar multiples of these vectors. Okay, 5 times the first one plus 13 times the second one minus 6 times the eighth one. That's a linear combination. The first one itself plus the second one itself. V1 plus V2. That's a linear combination. It's 1 times V1 plus 1 times V2. Okay, clear? Let's do an example, quick example. Example. Let's take v1 to be the vector 1, 2, 3. So this is a vector in R3. Okay. Let's take v2 to be the vector 2, negative 1, negative 2. Let's take v3. This is a 3, this blurry thing v3 to be the vector 3, 1, 1. And let's take v4 to be the vector uh, 4, 0, 2. Do you agree that these are four vectors in R3? Okay. So um, I'm going to write something, and you're going to feel some nostalgic air. Okay, so 13, 8, 13. Recognize this, dude? So I'm claiming that this is a linear combination of these four vectors. Why? I have to be able to write it as something times v1 plus something times v2 plus something times v3 plus something times v4 okay since here goes i'm going to take 0 times v1 minus 3 times v2 plus 5 times v3 plus 1 times v4 and I claim that this is indeed this vector. And you can check. It's easy to check, right? The first coordinate is 0 minus 6 plus 15 is 9 plus 4, 13. The second coordinate is 0 plus 3 plus 5 is 8 plus 0, 8. And the third coordinate is 0, 6 plus 5, 11 plus 2, 13. Do you agree? Okay, so this is a linear combination of these guys. Is it clear what a linear combination is? Okay. Now, this is not a coincidence that I took this specific vector, and maybe you're not recognizing these yet, but you have seen them before too. Okay, so we'll get to that in a few minutes. Okay. But before that, I want to define the notion of a span. So this was called a linear combination, a linear combination. And now I want to define a notion of a span. So, suppose we take 
Um, so let, let's call them um, use, yeah, let's call them U. Let U1, U2, all the way up to UK, UK be K vectors in um, V. V is some vector space. Okay. Define W is going to be the set of all the guys U, all the guys U, which are linear combinations of these k given vectors, such that um, let, maybe let's write it in in words first and then write it explicitly. So W is going to be the collection collection of all linear combinations of u1, u2, up to uk. This is w. I can rewrite it as the set of all u's such that u equals alpha 1 u1 plus alpha 2 u2 plus dot 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 alpha k uk and all these alpha i's are elements in the field do you agree that this is the same thing just written in math rather than in english right and I can also write it, I'm still going to write the exact same thing, but I'm going to use some more compact notation, namely the notation, the sigma notation. So I can write it as all the guys u, where u equals the sum of alpha i u i, where i goes from 1 to k, and all these alphas are in the field. Do you agree that this is again the same thing, just written in sigma notation? Good? So W is just all the possible linear combinations of K given specific vectors. And hinted by the fact that I called it W, I want to prove that this W is not just a collection or a bunch of elements or a set of elements. In fact, it's a subspace. Okay? So this is a theorem. So this is W. This is the W we're going to refer to right now. So theorem, W is a subspace of V. A collection of all possible linear combinations of given vectors is always a subspace. Now if you recall for a moment, this is what we did in a previous example. We had some uh, a couple of two by, uh, three by three matrices. One was the identity matrix, one, one, one on the diagonal, and the other one had a one, one, one on the diagonal going the other way. Remember that? And we took alpha, all possible alpha multiples of the first one, plus all possible beta multiples of the second one, and we said, hey, that's a subspace. And we argued that it is, but in fact, that's exactly what we're doing now, abstractly. We're taking, we're putting our hand into the big sack, all the elements in V, pulling out K specific ones, U1 up to UK, and doing the minimum that we need in order to make them a subspace. We're taking all their scalar multiples and all their possible sums. Okay? So this is going to be a subspace, and we're going to remark that it's the smallest possible subspace containing these exact k elements that we started with. Okay? So let's first prove this, and then we're going to write some remarks in another definition. So proof. So what do we need to prove? We need to prove that the three uh, necessary conditions in order for a subset to be a subspace hold. Okay? So the first condition one has to be non-empty. Okay? So uh, one, W is not empty since uh, the UIs are there.
Usually we check that zero is there. Here we don't know a priori that zero is there. It's not easy, it's not hard to, 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 to see that zero is there. We just take all the alphas to be zero. But even more straightforward is, well, we started with a bunch of UIs, so it's not empty. Okay. Okay, the second property is, we want to show that if we take a multiple of somebody in W, it's also in W. Okay, so W is closed under scalar multiplication since, let's take an element in W. A general element in W is of the form uh, alpha 1 u1 plus alpha 2 u2 plus dot 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 alpha k uk. This is a general element in W, right? We want to multiply it by a scalar. Here's a scalar, let's call it alpha. And we want to show that the product is still an element in W, right? But it is, because this can be rewritten as alpha alpha 1 u1 plus alpha alpha 2 u1, sorry, u2, plus dot 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 alpha alpha k uk. This is the, it's not exact, well, it's the dis distributive property. Um, yeah, it's precisely the distributive property, right? But now I can do another step on the same thing and write this. Because originally it was alpha times alpha 1 u1, but that is the same thing as, listen to what I'm saying. This was originally alpha times alpha 1 u1, but it's the same thing as alpha times, or it's the same thing as alpha alpha 1 times u1. Do you agree? So do you agree to this step which included uh, two properties of being in a vector space? Okay, the distributive property and the fact that scalars, uh, multiplying by two scalars, I can either first multiply the scalars or multiply them one by one. Okay, I don't remember if that was property eight or nine or whatever. Good? And now look, it's, it's a scalar times u1 plus a scalar times u2 plus a scalar times uk. Right? So this is clearly an element of W. Do you agree? Okay, so I took a general element in W, multiplied it by any scalar, and again got an element in W. So it's closed under scalar multiplication. Clear? Let's show that, it cl that it's closed under addition. If we show that, we're done. Right? So I need to take two guys of this form, add them, and claim that it's again an element in W. Let's do it using the, the, the sigma notation. Let's see if we're not scared. So here's a guy, so let's write it first. W is closed under addition. So let's take two guys, sum alpha i u i, i equals one to k. This is a general element in W a linear combination of the UIs, and I want to add it to another general element in W. Again, it's going to be a sum, i equals 1 to k, of a linear combinations of the UIs. I can't call them alpha because they're different, guy, different scalars, so let's call them beta i UI. This is, these are two general elements in W. Okay. How do I add sigmas like this? And if you're not used to this, you have to open it, to write it like this and see how you add. Okay? So if it, if it, if it, if, if, if it's a bit scary, or, or you feel that you're a bit not confident when doing this, open it up. Write, write it like this rather than like this. Okay? If you're good with the sigma notation, it's, it's good to get used to the sigma notation. It's useful. Okay? It makes life... Uh, uh, easier usually. So this is the same as sigma alpha i plus beta i ui. Do you agree? 
And this is an element in W. It's a bunch of scalars. It's a linear combination of the UIs. Do you agree? Good. So that's it. This proves it. W is a linear subspace, a vector subspace of V. Good? Everybody good? So let's go back to this board here where we defined W and add, um, so definition, W is called the span of U, uh, U1, U2, up to UK, the span of these elements, or sometimes the set spanned by these guys, or due to the theorem, the subspace spanned by these guys, okay, and denoted W equals, and this is just how we write it, span of U1, U2, up to UK. Okay, sometimes you, you, you may see, uh, instead of the word span, just SP, abbreviated SP, but I'm probably going to write the entire word usually. Okay? So, W is the span of these elements. Everything that can be obtained from these elements by means of linear combinations, okay? And it's called the span. It's a linear subspace, a vector subspace that we just proved, okay? It obviously contains all of them, and it contains the minimal stuff we need in order to be a subspace to contain them, right? It contains all their uh, scalar multiples and all sums of elements in there, right? So... Let's maybe remark that. So j j before we remark that, I want to add one more piece of notation here. The UIs, the UIs are called a, a spanning set. Okay, they're the set that spans W. Okay, so UIs are called, um, yeah, we need a new board, right? Let's take a new board. Oh, I don't want to erase this example. Um, we can erase here. Um, so W equals span of U1, U2, up to UK is not just a subspace, it's the smallest subspace which contains U1 up to UK, okay? In the sense that if you take any other subspace which contains these elements, it's going to contain W, okay? In the sense that if, let's call it uh, W bar, is any subspace... which uh, contains, which includes, which includes U1 up to UK, then W bar is included in W. Sorry, vice versa. Then W is included in W bar, okay? W bar can include them and be bigger, right? If you throw in more stuff, it could still be a subspace, but all of W is going to be there, not just these guys. All their linear combinations are necessarily going to live there, okay? And um, another comment that I made, so this is one comment, and another one, U1 up to UK are called 
a spanning set. Sometimes you'll see them called generators, okay, but I'm going to use this terminology, okay? Um, good. I want to go back to the questions about this. Is it clear what is a linear combination and what is a span and why is it a subspace and so on? Everything okay? Okay, I want to go back to this example for a minute. Um, so we started with four vectors here, just four vectors in R3, and showed that this specific vector is a linear combination of the four. Okay? And when you saw this, you probably thought, hey, there was this system of linear equations that we uh, studied in several examples, uh, saying different things about it, and it had this as, as its b, right, as its uh, constant um, vector, but I want to I wanna claim something else. Um, recall, recall the system the non-homogeneous system of linear equations that we have been looking at, and I'm going to remind you what it was. It was this matrix, one, yuck, one, two, three, four, two, negative one, one, zero. Remember this? Three, negative two, one, two, times x1, x2, x3, x4 equals 13, 8, 13. Remember this was the system? Do you see that these four vectors are in fact the columns of A, which was the coefficient matrix of this system? Do you see that? Okay. So what just happened here? What just happened here? How did we get this 13? This 13 is 1 times x1 plus 2 times x2 plus 3 times x3 plus 4 times x4. Do you see that? If we take the vector 0, negative 3, 5, 1 and plug it here, it's going to solve this system. In fact, it's going to be precisely this statement, right? This 13 is 0, so plug in 1, negative 3, 5, 1 here. 1, negative 3, 5, 1, okay? This 13 is precisely 0 times 1. I'm just writing it the opposite way, right? 0 times 1 minus 3 times 2, the minus 3 is living here, plus 5 times 3, 5 times 3, this is x3, right? plus 4 times 1, this is x4. Do you see that? Okay, so let's, let's write it again. Let's write it again. Um, let's rewrite this fact. So the fact that I could write 13, 8, 3 as a linear, as a linear combination of those four vectors, which were the columns of the coefficient matrix A, was not a coincidence. It was because that system had a solution. And the solution was precisely those coefficients that I needed in order to write 13A3 as a linear combination of those vectors. Okay, so let's write that. So, um, another way of um, writing a system of linear equations ax equals b is the following. Let's denote, denote the columns of A 
by the columns of A are vectors, right? Are, are column vectors. Let's denote them by A1, A2, all the way up to however many columns there are. How many columns are there? Well, four in this example, but in general, n, right? A n. There are n columns. No, 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 no. In, in, a, in an m by n matrix, there are n columns, right? So let's denote them by A1, A2, up to A n, okay? Then, a, a different way of writing the exact same system is x1 times A1, this is a vector, this is a number, a scalar, plus x2 times a2, plus dot dot dot, plus xn times an equals b. Do you see that this is precisely the same calculation? And when does the system have a solution? When is there an x that satisfies this? Precisely when there's an x whose components are x1 through xn that satisfies this. Do you agree? Clear? Do you see that these are two ways of expressing the exact same thing? It's a bit confusing, but it's just two ways of saying the same things. There in an example, here abstractly. Okay, so... So... The system, so uh, conclusion, conclusion, the system AX equals B has a solution there is an X which satisfies this if and only if this has a solution but what does it mean for this to have a solution? We can now say it in, in more professional words. The system has a solution if and only if B is a linear combination of the columns of A. Do you see that? Okay, do the words register? Let's write it. If and only if this is an abbreviation for if and only if, I don't know if you've encountered it, if and only if, B is a linear combination of the columns of A. Is this statement clear? If you can find a way to express B as a linear combination of the columns of A, then those components, those alphas of the linear combination are precisely, if you take them all as a vector, they're precisely going to be a solution vector to this system. Okay? In the example, is this clear? In the example, in the example, here, I'm back to the example, 0, negative 3, I'm reading the coefficients here, 5, 1 is a solution. It solves the system. If you put it here, you get the system satisfied. It enabled us to write the columns, uh, uh, the, the, the constant vector, the solutions, as a linear combination of the columns of the coefficient matrix. Okay, good. Let's say the same thing again in different words. No, 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 not, not the other way, the same way, but just in different words. Here I said that B is a linear combination of the columns of A. Can you say it differently? Can you say it using, for example, the word span? I want to say that B is some linear combination of these AIs. B is the span of all the... 
It's not the span, the span is a subspace. The span is the entire subspace, that's the span. It belongs to the span, right? It's an element. All of the guys that you can write like this is precisely the span of the columns. And the statement is that B belongs to the span. Okay, so I can add if and only if this is just rephrasing the same, the same statement. It's not a, a theorem or something. It's just saying it in different words. B belongs to the span of these columns. A1, A, N. Where A1 to A, N are the columns of A. Clear? Okay. And now there's a, a, a definition that, that we use, and the reason is that it's going to be useful. So we have a notation for all the vectors spanned by the columns of a given matrix. Okay, so notation, notation, um, we write it COL from the word columns, call of A equals um, the span of, let's write the columns of A. And the reason I'm not writing A1, A2 to AN is because I'm going to define something else here. Rho of A is the span of the rows of A. The rows of A are again vectors. Okay. These live in two totally different worlds. right? Let's look at our example again over here on this board. Here's A. The columns of A are vectors of length 3, right? They're 3 tuples, whereas the rows of A are 4 tuples. Okay, so these live in totally different worlds. Row of A is anything you can get as a linear combination of these 3 rows. Column of A is anything you can get as a linear combination as, as a linear combination of these 4 columns. This is a subspace of the, the the, the call A is a subspace of R3 in this case. Row A is a subspace of R4. Do you agree? They're in totally different worlds. We saw an example of how the notion of call A is useful, namely this conclusion here. So this we can now rewrite as column of A, right? Tell me if you agree over on this board. Good? Saying that a system has a solution is the same as saying that B belongs to call A, to the span of the columns of A. Okay? What is row of A useful for? This we haven't discussed yet, but it's going to be. Okay, so we didn't say anything about row of A yet. What, what, does, what, do the, what does the span of the rows, how does it relate? We're not there yet. We'll say it soon, very soon. Good? Okay, so um, I guess we'll stop this one here. So we now know the notion of a linear combination and we know the, the notion of a span. Okay, what I want to do next is by means of a couple of examples, to show you how we decide, suppose somebody gives you a subspace, W. And the subspace W is the span of some elements, is given by its generators, by its spanning set. And you pick out an element in V and you want to know, is it in W? Can it be written as a linear combination of the given UIs? Okay, I want to show you how we do that, how we decide that. So that's coming up next.